Hi, this is Bob Scully, and welcome to another edition of The World Show, Entrepreneurs, the Fiera Series. The entrepreneur we meet this week, Ralph Fair, is in many ways a very lucky man. He's married to the singer Julie Myers, and he lives in one of the most beautiful areas, in my opinion, of North America, the southern prairie of Manitoba province, just above North Dakota. And he has the privilege of being not just an entrepreneur, but an entrepreneur and an artisan. Elias Woodworking, which he has built up over the years into a highly successful company, produces magnificent objects made of wood. In all these respects, he is a lucky man. However, we often say on this series that entrepreneurs should be judged by their courage in the face of adversity. What if it's not just business adversity, but personal tragedy? The lesson is painful and permanent, but that too requires courage, and Ralph Fair had it. Here he is. Ralph Fair, uh, you are the, the Renaissance man on the prairie and uh, doing things from music production to, to woodwork, and we especially want to dwell on Elias Woodwork in a few minutes. That's a company that you built, which is hugely successful. Um, but it, it does happen. I have your permission to discuss one episode in your life that I think um, gave you that extra will to really succeed, um, but at some cost to yourself. And I know you brought it up with, with, uh, with our senior editor, mm -hmm. and so I'm bringing it up now. Um, and it concerns the two, two of your kids. Yeah, my 19-year-old uh, daughter and 21-year-old son died in a car crash uh, about 10 years ago now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it threw me into a tailspin emotionally for sure. But uh, it helped me kind of refocus and uh, handle my business affairs a little differently after that. Things became more and more methodical and more, that's the impression I get reading the description. Yeah, it, also I, uh, I ended up selling some of the shares of the company to some employees. It kind of felt uh, at the time as though that was maybe a reward I needed to give the people who kept the place running while I was emotionally absent. Mm -hmm. uh, and it turned out to be the best thing I ever did really because um, we're, we're all uh, motivated by the same thing and uh, there's no hidden agendas no, at all. Of course. And, and um, a tragedy like that, you had three children, I think. Yeah. Uh, it broke up your marriage. It, it ended up doing that, yeah. My ex-wife, she really had a hard time being around the familiar surroundings and stuff that reminded of her, uh, of our kids. And um, she decided one day she was uh, moving to Australia. So uh, I had a little hard time following and um, it was a strain for sure, yeah. And since, we have to say that happily remarried yes, I am, to Julie yeah. Myers, the performer, and you produce her occasionally. Yeah, right? I'm. I always tell people in the, uh, when I'm asked about my uh, business and so on that I'm a little different than the lion's share of most business people, and that I think both with the left and the right side of my brain, <laughs> which is code for a uh, failed musician has to go back to school and and uh, takes up engineering. And so I've actually always had music in, in, in the back of my mind and uh -huh. yeah, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, it's, I, I still play an instrument or two. And, and it was a new beginning for both of you. She too had gone through some. Yeah, yeah, we both, I, what drew us together at first was uh, shared tragedies. And There's something very entrepreneurial about you, um, definitely because uh, most people I think would have dropped the company, would not just simply not have been able to, you made the opposite decision to keep it and to make it a success. Well, I, I actually, I don't, I, I find it hard to uh, explain, but I, I mean, I, I found I needed structure really bad at the time. I needed a place to come to mm -hmm, work. Mm -hmm. uh, even if emotionally I was vacant, I really had a hard time dealing with, uh, with the tragedy at the time. Uh, those kids were, uh, they were they were my pride and joy, and um, they were making all the right decisions in life and everything. It was going really well, and mm -hmm. I, I just needed the structure of work. And at that time, I was a partner with uh, my brother John, and uh, he was entertaining um, some amazing offers from uh, multinational corporations that wanted our little Canadian company mm -hmm. as, uh, as a 
a branch, a Canadian branch plant, but probably because of the uh, uh, depressed uh, Canadian dollar at the time. Oh. And uh, I just couldn't go along with that, so uh, we sat down and we hammered out a deal where uh, I could buy the uh, majority ownership from him. And it's really at that time that I took a few of the employees as partners uh, in the business. And made it through. Yeah. And, it and through. it's astounding when I read everything that you produce, it's beautiful stuff and very carefully crafted. Uh, and we forget, we take wood for granted, sort of, because we think, you know, it's always been there and so forth. Mm. But it's really something you can fall in love with. It's, a, um, it's, the kind of, it's the kind of thing you can be extremely proud of. Yeah, wood, woodworkers are artistic uh, for the most part. But um, sometimes they're their own worst enemies in that they're all perfectionists. But mm -hmm. uh, they, they, uh, they do have some good qualities about them, too. And um, uh, most of the time... Woodworking is a cathartic kind of uh, activity that um, uh, where you're working with your hands, even though nowadays uh, so much is done with very high-tech mm -hmm. uh, computerized equipment and um, we, most of our equipment is, uh, comes out of Europe where the craft is much older than it is here. Yes, of course. And so they have a little bit of a jump on uh, the North American version of that equipment. Uh, and as it turns out now, a lot of our workforce comes out of yes. Europe as well. Yeah, so. from, from e this is interesting, from East Germany. Yes, yeah. Well, yeah, the East, uh, these people immigrated from East Germany to West Germany when the wall came down, and, and uh, they just felt um, they didn't feel at home there. They didn't feel uh, wanted. Uh, and I can see, you know, West Germany being overrun by mm -hmm. East Germans. The Aussies. I could, I, yeah, I could see how that was a problem. And so I think these people looked around the world, uh, checked out where in the globe there's people that still speak a little German, maybe, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they found the Mennonites southern are, Manitoba, yeah, exactly the Mennonites where you of are. southern yeah. Manitoba, to be a welcoming place. So, yeah, we have, we have fully half of our staff by now. That's is, over 100 people. You're, they're yeah. about 200 and some, 300 people? Yeah, 250 maybe yeah. or so, yeah. And so that is a lot of, of Aussies. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of talent though because they are good yeah. at, they are good at the technical are, stuff. They are very talented and very well educated. Some of these people have, we have one fellow who has a master's degree in stair building. Hmm. And uh, in North America, we, we don't know what to do with that. I'm not kidding. Uh, yeah. yeah. He's he's building, you know. But curved, he must he must be a great curved components for. He must be a great sales asset when you bring when you bring that up. You yeah, must close yeah, the sale yeah, pretty we, quick. You know, we have talent uh, that we can't use it all every day. We we wish we uh, we could, but sometimes they're forced to do some more menial things for a little while here and there. But you no, know, they have some turn out some amazing products. Yeah. And as I read through the the, the catalog, there's a there's a nice mix of uh, you are able to turn around very quickly respond to a, uh, to a, a mandate, um, or take your time on one thing that's very, very personalized. You're at ease in both, at both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, a large part of our production is, um, we always say it services the drive-through mentality that uh, <laughs> North America yeah. has sort of come to uh, be known for. So we, you know, on our, our standard run of equipment, uh, of uh, products we, you know, seven to 15 days is uh, all we have work in house. That's, Incredible. That's how quickly we turn it around, yeah. And in your description of the hardwoods, I had fun when you came to the bamboo, which is not a wood, you point that out, it's a form yeah. of grass, and then yeah. you explain that. But down the list, you say Mao bamboo, which is what you yes. have, what you stock, is not the bamboo eaten by pandas. No. So you're doing that for the panda lovers, right? So they yeah, we are, you. we're um, environmentally very conscious. We uh, pride ourselves in that. We work very hard to uh, not leave a big footprint. Um, our oak and maple timbers are from uh, farmed material mm. grown in northern USA. Uh, there's um, um, uh, our, our lacquers and, and, and paints that we use. We uh, we actually dis redistill the leftovers and stuff mm. and turn them into their basic products, uh, basic components, so that we can reuse that stuff. And we have 
uh, very sophisticated European paint machinery that automates the paint process mm. to capture all this overspray and so on, so it doesn't all end up in the, in the environment. And uh, that kind of thing is not possible for the small uh, five-man woodworking business yeah. to, to do. So we, our sales pitch uh, is to be the extension of um, the small woodworking factory. You know, but we, on a, we do on the hard stuff. But on a scalable yeah. scale. Yeah. And and, and um, do you respond, talking about sales, do you respond to what the business, that, you know, the phone that rings? Or do you have to make the phone ring? Is it is it proactive or is it word of mouth and people come to you? Well, for many, many years it was, uh, we did no advertising whatsoever. Uh, hmm. But A in the sign? last 15 years, uh, we've been exporting uh, out of this country for about 20 in the last 15 years, we've taken matters into our own, own hands, you know, and, and we advertise in trade magazines and do the trade show circuit with uh, displays and so on. And um, uh, we have even had some exposure in Europe now, so, we're, you know, we're working... Full out? Pretty much, yeah. And is there, uh, you have specialties obviously, but is there stuff that you won't do um, because you just don't feel it's you know, worth doing? Well, um, well, we, we don't work with endangered species woods and mm -hmm. so on, which, you know, um, Madagascar ebony, for instance, used to be a thing uh. we worked with for the first five to 10 years of our existence and, and um, rose woods and things that in some cases are, uh, you know, now listed as endangered and so on. We, we don't work with those anymore, and uh, we, we do a fair bit of FSC certified uh, jobs where All you the, have, yeah, to, uh, have to have the whole council. chain of yeah. uh, uh, custody uh, recorded and so on. And I would, I would guess that, uh, but I may be wrong, that your margins and so on, if the work is very well done and, and your craft is, you know, is remarkable, mm -hmm. you don't get quibbled on on the price, it's not. It's you know, you're not. It's not yeah. a commodity. It's the opposite of a commodity. We're yeah, we we just never ever want to be uh, bottom feeders and mm -hmm. people who are um, just dealing on price. We do want to you know present a uh, a product that everybody is happy with. Uh, quality kind of goes without saying these days. Yeah. You, you really need that to get in the door. Uh, delivery is important. And then price, well, it has to be reasonable to the point where you know average people can afford it. So it's it's definitely there, but it's definitely number three in the in the list of uh, the importance, you know. And do you are you re always responding to orders, or do you decide on a product and you decide to make a product line no. and then we, sell it? We do not. We we, we have a. Uh, we are in the business of mass customization. Mm -hmm. We have some standard offerings that we do, but we'll do them in any size, shape, color, wood oh, okay. species, so on. And um, we don't have any work in house that we make before it's sold. Oh, okay. uh, we make it to order. So you are so artisans. All yeah. our work comes in via uh, emails, phones, fax lines, and so on. And does that set you up for uh, crunches where everybody calls at the same time? Yeah. yeah, especially with short delivery. Used to be we had a little bit of time to play with, mm. but yeah, it can be really, uh, really nuts. Uh, so then it becomes night and day it, for a little while. You know, we, we just haven't had a, a slow time for, for years. Uh, I can't say no. That's a, that's a very good sign. It is, yeah. Even through right through the recession, um, you know, we, we used, when I first started out, we had issues with borrowing money and so on, and bankers would give us a hard time. And uh, I, I was tired of it, so I decided not to go the banking route. And uh, Manitoba at the time had a, a program called Grow Bonds, where we could issue a bond to anybody, oh. and they could own a little piece of our, our debt, really? so to speak. Yeah. Oh. And I still have some of those grow bonds on record, actually. Some but of those did, people they, are still they all get orders. redeemed? They, no, they don't. I still have some. The people have never redeemed them. They get paid a dividend every year. Oh, okay. And yeah. uh, 
I, I could bond. pay them out a long time ago, but I feel like I owe those people for, uh, we never had to repay that debt. We, had, we, we were instantly I've financed. I've never heard of that. That's very interesting. It, it was yeah. a wonderful program, but some people abused it and the, the province shut it down. Um, and we still don't use traditional banks. We, we use a credit union and uh, we have wonderful lenders right now. And if people, So nobody ever uh, calls up and to, to call the loan? No. No, in fact, when the recession hit, um, my banker, uh, I will never forget, told me, you know, it, it's, it's um, you should never waste a good recession. <laughs> How about that? And, and we expanded our business. We actually almost doubled it in size uh, over those years. Did you use that occasion to, to acquire? Yeah. yeah we, uh, and when you acquire, you're acquiring talent. We In didn't actually. We just acquired buildings oh. and land, and um, we uh, we had to hire the talent later. And and um, when when um, you're dealing with the with the uh, the bankers, uh, mm -hmm. like you say, they're 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 good guys. Yeah. Uh, but have you when you say you got tired of the bad guys? How, how were they the bad the bad bankers? Well. I remember when I first bought into the business uh, as a recent graduate of engineering and my brother John had purchased this business from a little, it was a little farm operation actually, it was two mm. or three people. And um, uh, I worked for him in the evenings helping him with the engineering side of things, you know, with his machinery and so on and so forth. And I kind of enjoyed it. I said, okay, I think I want to buy into this. Uh, John, let's go borrow some money <laughs> and, and turn this into a real business. So I went to the banker and I had, I thought I had done my my homework and, and presented to him and he said, you know, this to me looks like crisis management. <laughs> and I never forgot that. Encouraging I, I, guy. I, I, was, um, uh, I was taken aback because I had a plan. Mm -hmm. and, and you were correct, uh, obviously, because it and, worked out. And it did work out. We had to go a different route. And um, does it take a trained eye when you, when you buy this wood, the maple and yeah. the rosewood and all these things, you, can, you could probably spot a lousy piece of wood at ten feet. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not as good as, as some of our people. We have we have one person who does the lumber buying, mm -hmm. and uh, he has maybe one or two backups. But really, he's the guy. And uh, you know, I'm I'm an engineer. I'm a mechanical guy. Um, so you can fix and, all the nuts and bolts. Yeah, holes. and 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 a musician. So <laughs> you know, it's it, not everything. Uh, I've, I've, I'm pretty good at delegating uh, responsibility to people and I've done, worked hard at doing that and getting good people around me that know their part of the business. I don't need to know it all. But you went from, from three people to, to uh, yeah, 300 almost people 300, yeah. and that shows great constants. Well, well, how did you do it? If you had to sum it up in a nutshell. Well, I, you know, I reinvested in the business uh, over all these years. I, I mean, it's afforded me certain luxuries now, but I, I really, uh, I didn't, I, I, I was not the guy who was living high. You didn't, uh, you didn't I was in the it. trenches with the rest of them the whole time. Uh, and you know, it's employee owned to one de degree or another now, and uh, I'm still there. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I, I have no problem being part of the maintenance crew on a weekend. And, and um, we, we like to end sometimes what we call our French chef question because yeah. we had another series with French chefs in it oh, yeah. and we would ask them, okay, what have you got in your fridge? What do you eat at home? Yeah. So if I went to your place, the living room, everything must be all wood and fantastic. Well, actually, uh, um, my wife and I are building a new home just now and um, she's the real musician in, in this relationship, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, as we were talking about and. And uh, in her new show, she has, um, she uses the steampunk aesthetic. Uh -huh. uh, what I, is that? If you've ever heard of steampunk, you Google steampunk images and you get a clue. Okay. Uh, and she presents her, her entire show in that uh, look. And uh, so now we're building a home with a bit of steampunk flair to it. <laughs> And uh, so it'll have wood, all right, but it'll also have a lot of copper and brass and, yeah. and uh, old world sort of things. But I don't think much plastic. Not too much plastic. <laughs> well, no. well, Ralph Fair, um, you've done some great work and I know you'll be doing some more. So long life to you and to Elias and to Julie. Well, thank you. And it's such a pleasure to meet you. Same here. Oh.
Cause people out there turn the music in the 